you can to our vet tours. I would add to that, let those you're acquainted with, let those that you love and that you care for know that you care for them while you still can. Hello Toastmasters, tonight I'm going to share with you two stories, one about my grandmother and one about my two-year-old son. And I will try not to cry too much. In the hopes that you will remember to let those that you love know that you love them while you still can. When I was 12 years old, my paternal grandmother was dying of breast cancer. Every Sunday, my family would go over to her home and we would make her dinner, chicken, mashed potatoes, homemade rolls, and a green vegetable. And we would visit with her and see if she needed help with anything and just let her know that we love her. She was getting gross, and as I said, I'm very embarrassed. This was very selfish of me. Twelve-year-olds are often selfish, and I was no exception. So I chose not to say goodbye to her, and I simply waved. My dad hugged her and kissed her, and we left. That was the last time I saw her. The next Wednesday, we got a phone call that told us that she had died out of the blue. She was gone, and I did not take the opportunity while I had it to let her know that I loved her, and it pains me to this day. So as I have raised my children, and as I interact with members of my family, I keep in the back of my mind my grandmother. And I do the best I can to leave people on a good note, even if I'm a grump, and sometimes I get grumpy. <clears throat> June 12th, 2011. It was a Sunday, just like any other Sunday. We had just celebrated my baby boy, Jaden's second birthday. during the week and commuted home on the weekend. So I helped my husband pack his food and we sent him off to Seattle. Then I came back in, I fed the children lunch, I read them their stories, and I put them down for a nap, as we always do. This is the time I look forward to each day. Nap time, quiet time, me time, <coughs> and it is a rarity with five children to keep them all down and quiet. <laughs> then I grabbed my little lap desk, I grabbed my laptop computer, and I took Jaden in my arms. And 
we settled into the living room where I would nurse him to sleep and then I would study or blog or just do things that I cannot do with five children bouncing all over me. So I set Jaden, I crossed my legs and I set Jaden in my legs and his, his head was resting on my right arm and I nursed him to sleep. And then I, I kind of laid him down when he was done nursing. And he laid an arm, his arms were like this, and he was asleep. And even after having five kids, I still worry that something will happen in their sleep. So periodically I would look down at him and make sure he was still peach and breathing. And a couple times I looked down at him and he was peach and breathing. Then at about 3.15 that afternoon, I looked down at him, and he was purple. His eyes had a really vacant, they were open, he was as still as anything, and his eyes had a vacant, distant look, and they were glazed over. And then I watched as he shook, just his little arms, the top of his body shook a few times, and his eyes rolled up in the back of his head. I had no clue what was going on. So I got up, carrying my boy, and he was stiff. And I grabbed the phone. And I ran outside into my driveway thinking, maybe I will run to one of my neighbors. I have a nur two nurses and a firefighter within a few houses of me. I was wondering if I need to call 911. That's why I had the phone. So I ran around my driveway kind of thinking, what am I going to do, what am I going to do? And then I crouched down on my driveway and I was holding my son. And he turned blue. And he went completely limp like a rag doll. And I could not feel him breathing. And I could not feel his heart beating. And I did call 911 sometime and all that, that jumble. But I thought he had died. And I thought, this is what it feels like to have a child die. I was devastated. 911 came on and they said they were sent an ambulance. And in the meantime, my neighbor, who's a firefighter, a few houses down, heard the call and he saw me outside in my driveway. So he came over to be with me while this was going on to wait for the ambulance. And I was very comforted by that. The gentleman dispatcher told me, well, maybe he's choking, which I knew he wasn't, but... So why don't you do the Heimlich on him? So I started just, you know, pushing on my limp baby's stomach. And he did start breathing, barely, but he was breathing as hard as Because I knew he was alive, though I had no idea what happened to him. He ended up going to the emergency room, and we found out what had happened to him was he had a grand mal seizure. Now I knew nothing about seizures. We have no history of seizures. But it happened completely out of the blue. Now why am I telling you this? It's the holiday season. Many of us are going to see family members, and at least in my case, I'm going to see some family members who have caused me deep pain and a great hurt. They're coming to my house. <laughs> and I want to remember to be kind to them, even though I am hurt. Be kind to them while I still can, because who knows what may happen out of the blue. Mr. Toastmaster.